welcome back. So as Mantle Convection is jostling the, these plates around, different plates interact with different plates in a few different ways. We can either pull plates apart, we can either crash plates together, or sometimes they just kind of move laterally side by side and they kind of just grind past one another. These are all different types of boundaries. Not only are those those three main types of boundaries, but it depends on what type of crust is interacting as well. Continental crust, sun dry land typically, oceanic crust, the crust that's typically underneath the ocean oceans. Um, so it's dependent on that as well. And from those, we get different geology based on the boundaries, based on the types of crust. So let's go through some of that. So this is, a, a again, a map showing um, a number of different plates, uh, some of the major plates on Earth. There are some very, very small ones around some of the boundaries. These are just some of the major ones. But where you see, for example, the arrows kind of pointing away from each other, that is a, a a boundary that's pulling apart, known as a divergent boundary. If you see kind of arrows pointing at one another, that's where plates are crashing together, called a convergent boundary. And every once in a while, you kind of see them kind of pointing side by side. That would be known as what's, or what's known as a transform boundary. So let's look at all those. So convergent boundary. When you think convergent, think collide, convergent collide. This is when two plates are moving towards each other. Um, as they are colliding, one typically gets pushed underneath the other. Um, that's known as a subduction zone. You know, they don't just crash and keep pointing up. Something's got to give. Even if they do crash together and start to go up, something will eventually kind of get pushed down. That's why it's known as a subduction zone. Powerful earthquakes and volcanoes are very common near convergent boundaries. So it's a dangerous type of boundary to live by, convergent boundaries. Um, and there's three types of convergent boundaries. Ocean to continental crust, ocean to ocean crust, continent to continental crust, oceanic boundaries. So when oceanic crust is converging with continental crust, we can get volcanoes. More on that when we tackle our unit on volcanoes and volcanism, igneous rocks. So you can get volcanoes. You can get arcs of mountain ranges that are typically volcanic. You can create um, oceanic trenches, uh, a lot of earthquakes as well. And you can see typically the ocean crust gets subductive. The reason being, ocean crust, even though it's thinner, than the continental crust, it's actually made up of a more dense material. So when it crashes into something that's less dense, it gets kind of pushed down below. The higher density stuff always goes down. A great example of this is the small but mighty Juan de Fuca plate, which is converging with the North American plate. So, uh, and that's happening in kind of near Vancouver, down through Washington, Oregon, and Northern California, creating an, uh, an arc of mountains that are volcanic, Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams, Mount Rainier, any number of mountains uh, in the Cascade Range are volcanic, and earthquakes, large earthquakes, are also very common here. So this is what happens when you get oceanic crust colliding with continental crust. What about uh, ocean to ocean crust? So you get ocean crust uh, colliding with ocean crust, again, volcanics, earthquakes, but you can get island arcs of, of, of mountains that are kind of isolated islands, but they're kind of volcanic. Great example are the Aleutian Islands off of Alaska. So you have this oceanic crust converging with this oceanic crust, creating this island arc. These are all volcanic islands, or for the most part, volcanic islands. Um, yeah, so again, how do I know this is oceanic crust? It's under the ocean. How do I know this is oceanic crust on this side of the boundary? It's under the ocean. Here's the island arc. Here's a trench, a deep trench, as something is getting subducted. And then you have continent to continent collisions. Um, something still gets subducted because eventually something's got to give, even though they're the same type of stuff. You can get large mountain ranges, um, so a lot of earthquakes, uh, but not a lot of volcanic activity. A great example of this would be the Himalayan mountains. India. Uh, the, the plate that India is sitting on is crashing into the Eurasian plate. So continental crust, because it's a continent, crashing into continental crust, because it's a continent, kind of crumbling it up and driving up these mountains. Something eventually gave and is diving down, but you're still getting a lot of earthquakes in this area. So convergent boundaries.
What about divergent boundaries? So convergent collide, divergent think divide. Two plates move apart from each other, sometimes called ridge, rift, or spreading centers. Um, if it's, uh, uh, you know, kind of underneath the ocean, typically it's called a mid-oceanic ridge. Um, if it's on, on dry continental uh, crust, there are some. We typically call this rift, like the Great Rift Valley of Africa that sits along a divergent boundary. Um, you do get some weak earthquakes that occur at divergent boundaries, and some sparse but weak volcanic activity can occur as well. Uh, but nothing like a convergent boundary. Convergent boundaries, a lot of crazy volcanoes, a lot of crazy earthquakes. Divergent boundaries, eh, yeah, things are moving around, so earth's quaking. Yes, you are spreading apart, so you are uh, decreasing the pressure, causing uh, uh, an area for mantle material to kind of well up and cause some volcanics. But, but, but as far as boundaries go, pretty gentle. A great example of a of a of a mid Atlantic ridge, or a great example of a divergent boundary, and there's really only one type that we kind of talk about, which is divergent boundaries, not kind of like convergent, um, is the mid Atlantic ridge. So this this whole spreading center runs through the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. You have North and South America on one side, and Europe and Africa along the other. So this was that first spreading center that we mapped with submarines and figured out on either side of the this spreading center. This what's known as the name is the Mid Atlantic Ridge. The rocks are the same age, same type, and the magnetic polarity kind of flips as you work its way out. But this is what's driving North America and South America away from Europe and Africa. So these are these are spreading apart relative to one another. Um, what's left are transform boundaries. So when I say transform boundaries, uh, transform boundaries again kind of slide past one another laterally. Um, they're not crashing into one another, they're not pulling apart, they're just kind of grinding side, they're just kind of grinding side by side next to one another. Um, so when you think transform, think slide. Convergent collide, divergent divide, transform, tectonic plates, slide, kind of they just slide past one another, kind of indicated here. You can see them kind of sliding past one another. So again, they're grinding horizontally past one another. Strong earthquakes are very common. As these plates grind past one another, they can get stuck, energy is built up, when that, when they, that energy is released and there is some movement, that's what creates an earthquake. More on that in a later unit. So you can get uh, some strong earthquakes along transform boundaries. Really no volcanic activity. You're not really giving an, uh, a space for, for that to occur. The, the geology just isn't quite right. A very common transform boundary, one of the most well-known and the subject of many movies, is along the San Andreas Fault. Uh, a fault is a... a is, a, is either a break in movement or a, or on, can be located on boundaries between plates where there's movement of rock on either side. It's a very long fault, so when there's movement, there's a lot of energy released. On one side of the San Andreas Fault is the North American Plate. On the other side of the San Andreas Fault is the Pacific Plate. Los Angeles is on the Pacific Plate. San Francisco is on the North American Plate. They're actually moving in two different directions. So what's interesting, in a few million years, Los Angeles is heading to the north, San Francisco is heading to the south. So in a few million years, those two cities will actually be next to each other. Interesting. But San Francisco sits right along this major fault. A lot of earthquakes in San Francisco. Los Angeles area, not too far from this major fault. A lot of earthquakes in this area. All right? The, again, the, the movie, San Andreas, the movie about the San Andreas Fault, a number of other earthquake movies, you know, right here. But it's that side-by-side -side motion, that grinding, uh, that creates these, these earthquakes. So, in, so this is kind of central and southern California, a lot of earthquakes. Northern California, Oregon, and Washington, you get a convergent boundary. So earthquakes and volcanoes, but a different process. So the West Coast is a pretty crazy place to live by, as it turns out. Um, this, there's a lot going on. 
But this kind of just summarizes everything that I just talked about. We have uh, oceanic to oceanic divergent boundaries, um, you know, co continent to continent convergent boundaries, uh, ocean to ocean convergent boundaries, ocean to continent convergent boundaries, transform side by side motion, uh, like oh, oh, yeah, over here, because it's transform side by side motion. So this kind of really summarizes everything if you kind of understand what you're looking at. So it's a, it's a nice little little image to have, which obviously is in the PowerPoint that I provide to you. So as we conclude, as we conclude this unit, um, we're almost done. I think we have about one or two more sections to go. When we come back, we're going to talk about um, plate tectonics as it pertains to Arizona. Do we see evidence of plate tectonics here? Has plate tectonics helped to shape Arizona and the geology we see? Well, we'll find out when we come back. See you in a second.